5, verse number 38. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. My Lord, your God. Mm. 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 <laughs> My Lord, your God. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. God Almighty. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. <sighs> Lord, help us. You have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. My Lord, your God, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Look at that. That you may be sons and daughters of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? My, my. Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore... You shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. My Lord, your God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. I want to continue with part four of our series entitled Change. And I want to try to work for a little while from the subject, Change Your Response. Let's try that again. Change Your Response. Man, I was going to say, this say, mm, or something, mm. This series on change has all been centered around God's desire to do something new in our lives and for us. This new thing that probably will have us dealing with new dynamics of being uncomfortable, all because God desires us to experience the new. The new thing of God requires us, watch this, to examine our methods of responding. Did you hear me? The new thing of God, you know, that thing you keep asking God, do it, keep asking God, show yourself, keep praying about that new thing that you're looking to God for. It, it requires us to examine our methods of responding. Responding the same way is really doing the same thing. It is almost impossible to actually do differently if our responses are the same. Hear me, beloved. Our responses often give direction to our actions. Our responses give direction to our actions. What do you mean? Well, here's just a couple of them. An angry response usually determines the tone of our voice. Mm -hmm. Even the words we use, the words we choose to use. And maybe, Lord help us, the angry response might even determine if these hands are involved. I don't know why y'all looking at me like you all have been sanctified from the womb and you are Jesus' blood brother. Lord have mercy. Well, what about the hurt or the offended response? That usually determines whether we lash out or attack or do we run away to avoid. See, your response dictates or drives your subsequent actions. 
If we are going to ultimately change what we do, we are going to have to address how we respond. Now, 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 before you assume I'm going to go into this, just smile and superficially love everybody. No, 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 no. Changing your response can apply to anyone and any scenario. The new thing of God is tied to your changing your response. What if, before you check out, before you check out on me today, what if I'm sent to talk to you today? While you're thinking this is for somebody else. Well, let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. The Lord is moved, but let me hurry up. Our text is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. This is a long sermon in which Jesus Christ addresses numerous aspects of attitude, character, and behavior of his soon-to-be-developing group of followers. This is the sermon where we find specifically from Jesus how to treat different types of people in different situations. Our pericope can be broken into two parts that yet focus on the same point. You see, Jesus, in these ten scriptures, he is challenging the way people respond. Did you see that? I didn't make it up. He's challenging the way they respond. My God. Remember, remember, your response often dictates your action. A response of, oh, I love them, will lead to you excusing or even tolerating actions from one person that you would not accept from another. Let me run that one again. You you know there are some people that you love and they do some, um, we in church, they do some, some, some things. And if somebody else that you didn't love did the same thing, thing, not thing, the same thing, you'd be flipping out, going crazy. But because you love this person, you find a way to excuse foolish behavior. Why are y'all looking at me like I'm, oh, Lord have mercy. So, 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 Jesus in our text is being very descriptive, but yet direct in declaring that as my followers, you must change your responses. I keep saying this because I need you to get it. If you want the new thing God desires for you, maybe what must be addressed is your response. Not just how you do, how people do things, not just how people do things to you, but maybe how you respond to the affairs of life, the challenges and the difficulties of life. Because what interests me, uh, um, Sister Tasha, is we will learn how to put on our Christian face for how people treat us to try to respond biblically, but we will not check how we respond to life's conflicts and life's difficulties. We keep responding the same way, wondering why we keep having the same experience. Maybe, maybe the answer is I need to check how I respond to what happens. Our text repeatedly challenges one way of responding by suggesting another one. You saw that. We, 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 uh, we were tripped up by those challenging responses. If one slaps you, my Lord, your God, he said, turn the other cheek. Lord Jesus said, if somebody sues you for your, for your jacket, give them your whole coat. Lord, help us. We, we, Jesus Christ is challenging the way people are responding. 
by offering them a different alternative. What he is challenging is what is typically done based upon how they have been taught. See, what you do is based out of what you believe in what you've been taught. The way you do things is based upon what you believe, how you've been taught. Your ma- mama didn't raise no fool. My mama taught me this. And here we are doing what mama taught us. But here's the one that gets me. Doing what mama taught us, but wanting more than what mama had. Y'all didn't like that one. I ain't talking about your mama. I'm just talking in principle. Don't try to meet me after church time, but you talked about my mama. I ain't talking about your mama. I'm talking about principles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But that's the reality. We, 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 we are doing, we are responding out of the way we're typically, we've, we've typically done things. We're responding out of how and what we've been taught. But Christ challenges seven common, common examples with two basic principles. And here are the two parts of the text. He said, first of all, go the extra mile. And secondly, love your enemies I knew it wouldn't be many amens but that's what the book says the book is challenging us to even declare that maybe the way you've been taught to respond just might not cut it the way you have conditioned yourself to respond to stuff just might not get you to this new thing that you keep praying to experience. Here are the basic principles. I don't have to go back and walk through every example. Here are the principles in those two sections. The basic principle is that we can respond differently than we've been taught or accustomed. And even, watch this, we can respond differently mm, than the situation deserves. Work with me, work with me. It's possible. I know you've conditioned yourself. I know you've been raised. You've been, it's been drilled into you. I know you've been doing it X number of years. But it's possible for you to respond differently than you've been taught. And watch this. Even differently than the situation deserves. Where do you see that, preacher? I... I I, I need those specifics. See, that's the problem. You've tried to make this passage about specifics. See, they didn't slap me. They punched me. The Bible says how to handle when they punch you. So I'm free to do what I want to do. You missed the principle. Nobody asked for my coat. They asked for my shoes. Well, you missed the principle. The principles of this passage are there are times in which you have been taught that there's a certain way you are It is all right for you to respond. And maybe what the situation requires is different than what you've been taught and different, oh Lord, than what you've done all your adult life. And then the text also goes on to declare when he says love your enemies, he's really saying you can respond in a way in which the people and the situation doesn't deserve. Because enemies don't deserve to be loved. That's what you were thinking already. I just let you say amen now. Amen. Thank you, Kyla. Enemies don't deserve to be loved. Y'all, y'all already thought it. Just say man to it. That's the truth. Because <laughs> your mind is already run to 16 people that are your enemies and how you can't love none of them unless the Lord himself helps you. Don't mess with me. 
Come let me walk out there and walk down your row and tap you on your shoulder and say, hey, we're talking to you. Lord, have mercy. That's the reality. We, we, we've come to this condition, this position. But, but, but the text is saying that, that you can be taught to respond one way, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, but you can respond differently. And it also says that you can respond in a way that the people or the situation does not deserve. And you do that. Why? Not because they deserve, but because you deserve better better than to respond to their level y'all not talking to me see when people hate on you and you've done nothing to deserve it when you start hating back you come down to their level but when you know who you are you don't drop down to the level of people beneath you you say look i can love my enemy because why i'm bigger than that So, so, so here, here, I'm, 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 I'm rounding second base here, here. It is up to us to determine what responses we need to change, but more importantly, which responses we will change. See, I can preach all day long about changing responses, but if you don't believe it, if you don't take time to process yours, you'll be saying, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, when I finally see one, I'll do it. And you'll miss 16 opportunities to do what God gave you a chance to do, all because you were not willing, watch it, to examine your own responses. <sighs> now, some of you, I hear you. You're like, yeah, he talking good, but I don't think that's going to work for me. Well, here's, here's what I come to let you know. If you are content with everything you already have in your life, then you can keep responding the way you respond. If your marriage is perfect the way you want it to be, keep responding the way you want. If your kids are fairy tale children the way you want them to be, keep responding the way you want. If your finances are where you want them to be, keep responding the way you want. But if you want something more, if you want something better, you've got to sit back and check yourself and say, look, what response must I change? To experience this new thing God is trying to give to me. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, and, and here's, this one is free to put it in my notes. It should be a sign if the same thing keeps surfacing in your life. If the same thing with different folk keeps surfacing. Ding dong somebody's at your door trying to get you to see that even though you were right in how you chose to respond by your teaching that there's a response you can give that's different that just might tap into a new dimension of what God wants to bring into your life so so we've got to ask ourselves a couple of questions We've got to ask ourselves, is this thing, is, is this what I'm experiencing? Is this all there is for me? Is, is this all? If I know what I was taught. I know how I've responded. But is this the extent of what God can do in my life? And if the answer from your heart is yes, then my answer to you, my response to you rather is keep doing what you're doing. But for those who say what I have is good, but I believe there's better. For those that say, I'm enjoying what I have, but I hunger for more. For those that say, I'm pleased with what I have, but I do believe there's another level I could experience. If that's where you are, then today I need you to catch that you've got to check your responses to the various things that come into your situation. 
Why? Why, Pastor? Why? Because, because you got to find out. Because if you don't respond right, then your actions won't be right. And if your actions are not right, then the results cannot be right. So if results come from actions and actions come from responses, then to get better results, I must have better responses. Ah, Lord, if y'all waiting for me to shake the mic and holler, you're going to miss it today. Ah, but, 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 but why? Because, because as I was considering and consulting God about some things in this particular, this particular message, I heard God begin to say, look, man, look and examine a few things that you even done differently. I said, wait a minute, what you mean? I said, I thought I was pretty good. He said, yeah, but look, uh, over the past few months, you found yourself doing a few things that you thought were small differently. I said, okay, I think you got a point. Jesus, I think you got a point. You know, I'm going to have to tell the Lord he's a liar, but, you know, Christina, sometimes you just don't see what he sees. So I'm like, I think, all right, I, I, I hear you. You said um, and, 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 and so then I thought about something. I said, well, what did I do? I thought about that. I said, I'd done this. I was like, hmm. Uh, and I said, amazing. I did this little thing different that I didn't really have to, but I did this thing that was little to me different, but it got a response from people that, it, that elicited a better response in action from them. I said, huh. Then I thought about something else, and I said, what? And God said, what about that text you sent to a coworker the other day? I said, oh, yeah. And if they responded two days later, they said, thank you for thinking of them. I said, huh, God Almighty, I didn't even have to. Okay, but then here's where, here's where, Deacon Owens, here's where the rubber met the road. I was talking to my wife one day this week while she was in Milwaukee, and, and, and we were having a conversation, and I had said something and did something, and she said, Wow, I really like how you handled that differently and you said that differently. And I'm like, oh, girl, go somewhere. You know, it's the same. She said, no, 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 no. I'm really telling you because I recognize how this and it made her want to do something different for me because I changed how I responded to something she usually does. See, and the reality comes when you don't see it that way and you feel justified in your response, you keep doing the same thing because you convince yourself I'm good. They're the one that messed up. They're the one that did it. So they're the one that has to make the change, not me. I'm justified. I'm right. And you could be right. The Bible said you taught, you were taught an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The Bible says you were, you were taught love those who love you. But God turned around and said, can you change up your response and get something different? And this is where I'm coming to you today. This is where I'm trying to challenge you to recognize that God is trying to tell you before you keep pointing the finger at other people, talk about what they don't do right. God is saying, can you check and assess your own response? When you're stressed, what's your typical response? Do you lash out at people? Huh. Or, do, or, or what about this? Or do you go back to your addictions? Huh. You, don't, you want me to? All right. You, need, you should have said amen. I wouldn't have to name them. You go back to your porn. You go back to your drinking. You go back to your drugs. You go back to your eating. You go back to your addiction. You, you go back to stuff that you said you were free from. Why? Because you're stressed. And it's a re stress is going to happen. The question is how do you respond to it? Mm -hmm. oh, Lord, oh, do you, instead of going, instead of lashing out at people and going back to your addiction, uh, how about some meditation? How about intentionally giving people grace because I realize I'm stressed out? And since I'm stressed out, you may not be that bad, but I'm so stressed out, I feel like your little stuff is big stuff. But if I don't give you grace, we're going to fight. But if I intentionally give you grace, we just might get through this without a fight. 
Y'all don't want to be real. What? When you don't, when you're without enough rest, what is your typical response? Are you short tempered and moody? Uh huh. Uh, do you defer to being overly professional so that you can say, I wasn't snappy? And all of a sudden now you're extra, how are you today? Extra professional. And folk realize, there, there they go. That, that's them. We know they ain't getting enough sleep because they get funny acting like that. When they got enough sleep, they're hey, what's up? How y'all doing? All right, how be a style today? Because why? What is. <laughs> So, so when you don't get enough rest, instead of lashing out, instead of being short-tempered and moody, how about studying to be quiet? How about being intentionally submitted to the Holy Ghost? Talking about, child, I know I had no sleep today. Holy Ghost, you got to work today because if I don't hear you, somebody going to get arrested and it might be me. Lord, have mercy. When things are difficult, what is your typical response? Do you blame others? Do you point the finger? Do you accuse other people? Compared to asking seasoned people for help. Or maybe, maybe just trying to do the Bible. Those who lack wisdom ask of God who gives freely and does not withhold. So instead of you being in difficult times, getting short, moody, and snappy with people, actually say, hey, 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 I need some help. You, you've been down this road before. Y'all ain't talking. You've been here before. How did you? Look, I want to know, how did you handle being a single divorced mom with multiple kids? You seem to be good. Now help me with mine now, Lord Jesus. But no, 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 no. We sit back and we get short. We get moody. We get snappy with people. And we try to figure out why we can't have relationships and friends. When you're attacked, what's your typical response? Do you fight? 